Hey guys, welcome back to the This Is Soul Skate Shop YouTube channel. I am here with Ricardo Lino today and we're gonna do a behind the brand series for Flying Eagle Skates. And Flying Eagle Skates you might know um, and Ricardo Lino you might know. Ricardo is a YouTuber as well. Uh, follow him on his channel, Ricardo Lino, of course. <laughs> um, and Ricardo just got uh, promoted to the role of global brand manager for uh, Flying Eagle. So that's why we do this series with him. And normally we do the behind the brand series with the actual owner, but the actual owner is Tracy. And it would be a little bit hard to communicate with her. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's why Ricardo is the perfect uh, substitute uh, brand owner um, because uh, you're really good. At I don't own it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like the substitute. <laughs> Um, and in this series uh, behind the brand, um, we take a look at like the history of a certain brand and maybe like a, a, a small part of, of the future. Uh, and I try to look at it from different uh, angles, like there's the, the product angles, like how, how did the product change during the years? But then there's also like the marketing angle. So like maybe like there's different team writers or collaborations going on, but there's also the behind the scenes stuff. But there's also the behind the scenes stuff that we might want to know. Maybe they changed factories or like got a whole different <laughs> uh, situation, like distribution situation. Or So we try to look at every era from like a couple different angles and then move on to the next era. So where does the story for Flagging all start? Okay. So before anything, just let me just a little disclaimer. I think it's important, yeah. which is there will be, I just, started working with Flying Eagle. So there's a lot of the stuff that I know. There's a lot of the things that I may not know exact dates, okay? Yep. And I will be speaking about as much as I know and obviously as much as I can say. I'm open about it. But if there's certain things that I don't know, I will not go through ways to the infinity and beyond. So I'll just stay above the surface. Sounds good. Um, about Flying Eagle, let me just get closer to the microphone. Uh, about Flying Eagle, it's a, comp it's a company called Flying Eagle Sports, which started in 2006, 2006. But they only released their first product in 2008. So that's when they first hit the market. And uh, for the first two years, it was only national market. Mm. So it was just China. Um, can you, can you uh, tell me a little bit about maybe the, the people who started it and how it was created? Yes, of course. So Flying Eagle was created by a couple mm -hmm. called John. He is called John and she's called Tracy. Mm -hmm. They obviously still together and they are the owners of the brand. So they were... She, so basically Tracy is the people that... It's a person that people may know the most because she does basically all the trading and she used to communicate everything about the brand up until a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago. But what people may not know is John. John is the person behind all the production. Mm -hmm. So everything that has to do with production is John. And Flying Eagle is at this moment... I don't want to say it's the only one, but probably is the only brand on the market with their own factory that only produces for themselves. Yeah. There are things that we'll be speaking throughout this conversation, mm -hmm. like eras or faces that was a bit different. Like yeah. in the beginning, in the beginning, they were basically assembling product because it started with an open mold. Mm -hmm. But throughout the way, they started producing their own skate. Very cool. Um, do, do you know what made them get their own factory and brand in the beginning? Like what motivated them? So I don't want to say anything wrong, but from what I know, John used to work in manufacturing mm -hmm. and he wanted to create his own business. And by creating his own business, he started looking into ways to get into something where there was not a lot of people doing and where he could be successful. Yeah. They were very young. It was a very young couple on the early 20s. Mm. Wow. And they asked money to the bank and they got all these things that they needed in order to start the company. Wow. And nowadays, if you see it, it's really, really impressive what they did. That's a big move. Yes, but it's, it's even more. And I know that for a lot of the people that skate, they 
including myself, a lot of times, we will look at things like, oh, yeah, but if they don't skate, are they going to know? Well, we need to get surrounded by people who knows. It's the truth. It's, but sometimes not having their heart into something also helps because love sometimes makes us blind. So Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I think it's the... Just, I don't know where it is. It should be good. Okay. Maybe it's my bones. <laughs> so it's a little bit loose here on this side, probably. Ah, I'm not, just not going to lean on it. Okay, all good. Um, okay, so the motivation to start. Um, then... Um, you said that they were the only company making their own skate. Isn't Roaches also like only making for themselves? Well, that's why I said I don't want to say anything wrong. But one of I, I do know that Roaches produced at least in the past, yeah. and every now and then they would produce collaborations with other things. Even like last year, they were communicating about the skate that they produced for a very expensive high-end brand mm -hmm. that they produced a quad skate. In the beginning, in the early days, they they did produce. Uh, the M12 boot for other company, but I cannot speak for Rogers. I do know that not everything that they do is made at the factory. A lot yeah. of the thing is just yeah, true coming okay. from somewhere else. Yeah. While Flying Eagle the skates, they're all Flying Eagle. They're all Flying Eagle, made in the factory. Yes, yeah. uh, this is important. Yeah, up until a couple of months ago, I didn't know they do not do injection molding themselves at their own ah. factory. Mm -hmm. Okay, but being they are located in Dongguan, mm -hmm. which is an area of China which is known for uh, a lot of factories being, a lot of production happening, and especially in skating, that's where a lot of the other brands are producing their products. But being in that place, you have access to these, 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 and that all there. Mm -hmm. So they have there's a lot of the stuff that they produce themselves at their factories. Mm -hmm. But they imagine, like the wheels as an example, no one is producing wheels. There's no skate brand producing their own wheels. Mm. They get the wheels here. And then the frame, you get a company right next to yours that produces the frame just for you, where you have your own molds or your own CNC yeah. uh, projects that they're going to do and all that. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of the stuff that they do, which is in their factory. Mm. A lot of the stuff, it's outsourced. Yeah. Makes sense. So this, uh, this is important because people sometimes think, oh, they do everything from yeah. from scratch. No one does it. No, of course. So 2006 they start, and then 2008 you have the first product. Did it take so long to uh, to to kick up? Well, to, to kick start. I, I don't really know because 2006 can be a full year, and 2008 can also be a full year. Yeah, so imagine true. if it's like the end of 2006 to start a company in the beginning of 2008. It's yeah. like a full year to organize. Something it's it's not that long. How, how long does it take to release a whole brand? Like if yeah. you're going to be doing, if you're going to be putting your own ideas into a product, getting a mold. Yes, mm -hmm. it was a open mold. The company started with a mold that later was known by Power Slide as the Power Slide Metropolis. Yeah, but it was a. I if I, I don't want to say anything wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, it was even the first rollerblade twister. Uh, I saw the photo and uh, the. Original Technica skates, not that one. I can tell you that. Okay, yeah. maybe. I don't know exactly, so I cannot say anything wrong. But yeah. um, I do know that the, the Power Slime and Trouble is similar to that. But anyway, yeah. this company, when they started, they started it with that mold. Okay. With the orange skate that I showed you previously, yeah. some <laughs> images. And then 29, they released another one that, that had like a built-in slider. Mm -hmm. But these... Skates, mm -hmm. uh, when you're when they were starting, they were mainly open molds. Yeah. Uh, they didn't really add their own molds up until a couple of years later. Yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting. So uh, just for people, there's like these molds. These are these big metal pieces, and they're super heavy, but also super expensive. And it's also hard to design them, but it's also just the material that goes in it is very expensive alone. So the cost for this mold to design it and to actually have it in casted iron is super expensive. So it's smart for, for, for a factory to work with open molds. And open molds are just like owned by maybe the factory next door or some, somebody else. Or, and they're kind of like just kind of like floating around there in Dongguan. That's kind of like what the feeling I have. No, usually the, the, basically the way that it works is 
when you have the mold, mm -hmm. you have the power. Yeah. So the the mold stays in the factory. The mold is what gives the factory a certain power. And if because that's how they make their money, obviously, like yeah. the injection molding factories. But what you need to understand too is you can get an open mold for very cheap, and yeah. you can get a very you can get an open mold for a bit more. You can do changes on the open mold, but even before doing changes and spending a lot more, you can do you can just pay for exclusivity of the open mold. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways to approach one of those molds that is already made. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the more expensive is to start something completely from scratch. Yeah. But there have been there have been other brands on the market that got a mold that was already there. They did the changes, and they pay for the exclusivity. And yeah, it's a huge investment still. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll you'll be surprised how not exclusive some of those are. One hundred percent. Because uh, some of the molds that you think are exclusive are actually made with copies in China as well, right? Yes. Yeah. There are there are there are. It was an era mm -hmm. where certain skates were trending. Mm -hmm. So other people thought, oh, now it's a good time to try to make that and sell it. Yeah. And, well, I'm surprised that it didn't happen more throughout the, the pandemic because with skating mm. uh, trending a bit more a couple of years ago, some of the products started selling more. I'm surprised that it wasn't more molds being started, but I guess there's a lot. Yeah. There was a lot of other industries that were also benefiting from it. So, yep. Um, so 2008, uh, they have their first like production. Um, they have their own. They have the the first like open molds. And what markets are they selling to? Mainly Chinese markets, which is I, a huge market. Okay. So. If you look at the first skate, if you look at the, the frame, I would say that it's mainly oriented to slalom, which is the yeah. biggest part of the Chinese market. Mm. It's kids and slalom. It's been changing a bit over the past couple of years, but I think it's important for people to understand that the Asian culture, especially the Chinese culture, is very different from mm. the Western culture. And I know that most of the people watching these are Westerners. Yeah. And me as a Western myself, sometimes I struggle to understand what the people I work with thinks about what I do or what I think. Mm -hmm. And I also struggle to think, to to understand the way they go about things. Uh, well, what differences are there? So, example, in terms of skating, the reason why these segments of skating or these disciplines of skating are so much bigger than, example, fitness skating Mm -hmm. or recreational skating is that in general Asians work with goals this was something that was explained to me the first time I went to China by a good friend of mine Michael mm -hmm. Michael Young is from Hong Kong and he was explaining it to me why aggressive skating is not that big of a thing mm -hmm. if if aggressive skating would have been an Olympic sport ah. it would make a huge difference because if you know go, if you now go to China you'll see the amount of huge brands investing in skateboarding that didn't care about it like a mm -hmm. couple years ago okay but having the goal is very important for parents. Parents yeah. want their kids to do something where the kids are going to compete, where they're going to need to get better at something, where they're going to work around the discipline, if that makes sense. Yeah. And in slalom skating, that happens a lot. In speed skating, that happens mm. a lot. Okay. So, with Flying Eagle, the first model that came out, you would say like it's a hard boot, but if you look at the frame and everything was very based on what was around the market. And that was obviously the time that Seba completely owned the market. Yeah. Like there was no one else being able to face Seba at all in mm -hmm. China, which there is no brand yet still in China mm -hmm. that can compete with Seba, I would say. But at the end of the day, brands were trying to do something that were more in the same style. Yeah. So 2008, that's what they had. Yeah. They had a... Uh, so, um do it's a hard boot, more like yeah. uh, slalom, like more something like a I don't know, like like it's not a FR, but it's if you don't have any skates here that we're talking about, maybe I'll just uh, yes. include a, a yes, picture yes, yes, yes. if you send it later. Yeah, easier, just yeah. easier. I cool. can show you like the whole timeline by someone yeah. going through the because at yeah. the, at the when we go to the factory and to the showroom, you'll have all that, so we can yeah, that. perfect. Um, and then they started making their uh, first own molds. Um, um, what skate was that? And because there, I know there's like a lot of 
flying eco skates on the market. Uh, um, it's hard for me even to differentiate between all of them because so ma- there are so many. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what was the first one and kind of like how, th- how did the, their molds change and why, why do they even have so okay. many? So let me, before we go with, to the molds, let me just go and tell you something else. In 2010, that's when the company started internationalizing and they started like uh, exporting to Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Like that would be like Malaysia, uh, that would be like Indonesia. I don't know exactly what country was first. Yeah. I know about Southeast Asia. Um, it was between, I cannot tell you the exact dates because to be fully honest, I don't know. But it's between 2010 mm-hmm. and 2013 that the first molds started being a thing. Mm-hmm. And the first mold that I know, it's the one that it's it's the F five mm-hmm. and the F six. It's the, it's a similar skate, and we'll get there because the way that this the, these skates are named is different from what we are used in the West, and it, we need to look at it. Until here has been a lot more of a factory driven company. The mm-hmm. way that a lot of things were happening. The, the way that the, na- the skates were named and all that. What happened after 2014 will change that a little bit, but we'll get there in a second. The first one was the F5 and the F6, which just came out now under the name Eclipse. Mm. And it's basically a hard boot skate, a very stiff hard boot skate that had a lot of fans over the world because it's like all those very specific holes. But the thing that differentiated this skate from most the other skates was the frame. Because the frame has a eagle, and a lot of yeah. people didn't. I know that a lot of people didn't like the style of it, mm-hmm. but it was unique. Yeah. And as much as they didn't like it, it, it made a splash on people's yeah. memory. Yeah. memory. But well, you're bundling the F5 and the F6 together now? Well, no. But the F5 and the F6, is sim- it's, a, it's the same boot, basically, the same okay. mold. Uh, okay. But the F5 okay. and the F6, they both have the, they both have the metal mounting plate. Mm-hmm. Okay. And one of them has more holes than the other. Uh, one of them has okay. seven holes, while the other one has three holes in a line. And there are slight yeah. differences on the skate. So I'm, I'm talking about them the same yeah. because... Exactly. Up until now, the naming, I couldn't just say this is the Eclipse mold or the Falcon mold because the later the yeah. F5 became the Eclipse. Yeah. And the F6 became the Falcon uh, but there were still different iterations, and I can explain you why they have those names if you want. Now I can let, do it later. It's yeah, let's do it. let's do it. Okay, so again, this is the part that it took me a while to understand. I think I now can simplify it and make it very easy for you to understand. But if if at least most of the people listening to this, if they will look into some Chinese writing, they will not understand anything. No, when you look at the Chinese characters, you can't really understand what are the letters and what sure. do they mean, right? Yeah. If you look at it from the other side, it's going to be the same. But they look at our words, it also looks very complicated. Mm-hmm. And I know that they can have like, if you know 500 characters, you know about 85% of Chinese. Okay. 500. Okay. While our alphabet, it depends on where you are, can go like up to 30. Yeah. There. So it's yeah. it's very different. But if it's if you're not used to it, it makes a difference. Yeah. So instead of having a word, which is a couple of different letters it's much easier to name it in the factory mm-hmm. if you, especially if you're going to name it if you're going to sell it in the west yeah. with one letter and one number yeah and a lot of companies do that mm-hmm. you will see that a lot of like with the company that I worked previously with Marker you'll have the MT yeah with FR you have with Sabre you, you have the FR yeah. and a, a lot the of those skates. Have the 909. The 909, 909 yes. 908 was also uh, written in the show. Yeah, it, yeah, it happens with a lot of different brands, and a lot of people sometimes don't understand the reason, but that has been the reason, because the people that work at the factory, they need to relate to that product. They're working the product. Yeah. And that's what's been happening until now. But there are ways to go around it, because all these brands had to go around it, you mm-hmm. know? So it's a question of injecting them in the, yeah. <laughs> in the company. <laughs> Uh, so then the, there's the Falcon and there's the Eclipse, but the, and then the F5 and the F6, they're the same mold, but they have two different names. Yes. So that's because also confusing. It, because imagine, like, instead of having the F5 and the F5 Pro and the F6 and the F6 Pro and uh, all that, yeah. they, it's way prior to my time 
And somehow someone in the company thought this would be a better idea. And then you would have the F110, which is that boot with the three times 110. So it, it became a bit messy. Yeah. You know? And so when I started now working with a company that has been one of the things that we somehow struggle the most to be able to relate to a product and to explain exactly what we want about the product. And sometimes mm-hmm. it was a bit messy and like, like we need to do something about it, which is happening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so there's a F5 and F6, it's the same one. Uh, and then uh, what other molds are there and how do they There's a, it? one of them, I would say the most important one um, in terms of technology advancement would be the F7. Okay. Which, see, it doesn't go with F5, F6, then you would expect the F7 to just to be similar with now. But the F7 is a completely different one. Okay. So the F7 is basically a dual density hard boot skate. Okay. Uh, it uses a different last. Mm. So, by the way, the company uses right now, there's, I don't want to say anything wrong, it's four or five different lasts. And for someone watching this who doesn't know what a last is, yeah, basically please. a last is a different food shape. Because yeah. you need to use a food shape made out of a material. I wouldn't say it's a plastic, but it's something like a resin, like a really mm. hard, I can say the same images, you can insert here now. And that's what's, the skate is going to be made around because you have the mold, mm-hmm. which is basically for the shell, the plastic, right? But then you also need the liner to be made around. So but the liner needs to use two things. The liner needs, needs to be made around a last mm-hmm. and also needs to be uh, thought about the inside of the mold. Yeah. So there's a couple of different things that you need to have in mind in order not to have pressure points and all that. And this is one of the things where this brand has been really good and you can ask anyone in the world about either the quality of the product or the comfort. Now, one of the things that Flying Eagle is known for mm-hmm. is for the quality of the product. Some people may not like the design up until now because mm-hmm. that's a lot of the stuff going to change, but whatever. But... People always relate about this to this brand about the same. Like it has a super high quality product mm. and comfort. So that's why I was talking about uh, the lasts. Yeah. Now with this boot that we were using, it is a different last from the F5 and F6. The F7 is a different last from the F5 and the F6. Yeah. And also the way that it's built is that the part that goes around your foot, it's softer. For someone that need, that knows, like example, an aggressive skate like the the Rogers Fifth Element, you'll see the top part is a different color, and yeah. that different color is softer. It's almost like a, almost like a, it's not a fabric, it's almost like rubber. Yeah. While the other one is a hard plastic, mm-hmm. and the goal with that is to wrap around your foot, mm-hmm. while still giving you support. Um, so it's the top part is uh, also for the F- X7 of F- F7. Sorry. Yes. So the top part is for the F7, it's a softer plastic yes. and the rest is harder. Yes, but I think we jumped a little bit because I went to the next model and yeah. I kind of like stepped a little bit out of the, um, I went a little bit out of the timeline because I went straight to 2015. That's when this skate was released. Ah, okay. Yeah. And we were going with molds. Yeah, yeah. But if we go on the timeline of the brand, I think the most important year for the brand was 2014. Yeah. And what happened, there were two very important things that happened in 2014. Yeah. Before we go there, yeah, you said you wanted to say some stuff about how Flying, Flying Eagle grew as well with opening clubs before that already. That's 2014. Oh, that's 2014. Yes, 2014. Okay, 2014. Cool. So in 2014, 2014 was the year that Flying Eagle got approved the certification. Yes, you need to go for you to be able to sell in the European market. Mm-hmm. You would need to go through a certification process. And 2014 was the year that Flying Eagle went through this process and completely advanced. And in the exact same year, that's when they started um, selling in Europe and USA. Mm. Something that very important that also happened the prior year that I jumped was Mm. in 2013, the company changed the image Mm. and came out with a logo that a lot of the people know. Ah, yeah the the eagle logo and and then 2014 they started do you have some of the older logos yeah i can get them yeah it would be cool to show people how, how that uh, evolved as well and then with um 
riders? Did they have any riders before that? Like team riders? Yeah, they, 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 I don't know exactly the names of them yeah. because they were mainly Asians. Yeah. So I, I don't know exactly the name of them, but until there, they had like mainly Asian skaters. They had some slalom skaters and all that. But yeah. It was in 2014 when they, when they made uh, the connection with Europe through Oli Bennett, yeah. which is, I would say, like the most important piece yeah. of the puzzle for this company. And everyone at the company, even if it doesn't work for the company for a couple of years, everyone still loves him and respects him. It's yeah, insane. cool. He's a great guy. Um, how did that uh, and how did the connection start? Okay, one last thing before going to Oli. Yeah. Uh, in 2014, they happened the other part, which is the roller clubs. Okay. Do you want me to do that now, or I can do it after Oli? Up to you. Yeah, oh, we're talking about Oli now. Okay. Yeah. So then we get back to the clubs. Yeah. From what I know, well, maybe sorry. Up to you, same. Because after Oli, it's a roller coaster. Kind of, yeah, well, I can explain both. So in 2014, I said it was a very important year. And the reason why it was so important was because they went through a certification and they started doing sales to the European market and to the US, to the European market and did the sales through Oli Bennett, which we're going to go there in a second. But also what happened extremely important for the company in 2014 was the Flying Eagle, they call it roller skating clubs. Mm -hmm. And what, what that is, is basically what we call in the West... Uh, a shop in a shopping mall mm -hmm. and it's basically a space in a shopping mall with instructors and it's a blank space sometimes with a circle sometimes with obstacles and kids go there to have skating lessons and it's insane because they started with one club there and then a couple like I think it was 2016 or 2017 they broke the mark of 100 clubs That's and nowadays crazy. they have close to 200 right now they're teaching over three they're doing over three million lessons per year in China yeah there's like uh, I, I don't want to say anything wrong it's between Ugh. six between six and nine instructors yeah between three and nine instructors um, per club yeah and you can see how many people how many people are working or getting jobs yeah through that and that, that's the same company that who owns those, uh, like shop, shopping mall stores no, slash no. clubs. Or no. do they have like it's not owned by Flying Eagle. So basically, okay. the first ones were, yeah. and then they have more like um, I call it. Um, I don't want to say anything wrong. Like if you open a McDonald's or if you want, a uh, franchise, yeah, yeah kind yeah. of like a franchise mm -hmm. that you can apply for it yeah. because the other companies do it. I'm not saying that Fine Eagle is doing something that other brands don't do it. Yeah. Other brands do it. Yeah. Okay. And Fine Eagle has that thing. They provide a service yeah. that you will have the whole image around because if you just go and if you just rent a, a shopping mall and it's a place and you try to make your thing, it's yeah. not going to be probably as appealing as a company that already yeah. Made the whole branding around it and it has like a strong image people already know yeah and the way that whole thing works is like imagine you as a parent mm -hmm. you go to the shopping mall and your kids just stay there having skate lessons skating with other kids yeah and other some of them some of the clubs don't even work right inside the mall some of them are outside the mall mm. Funny enough, I've seen some of these in a video that I made on a personal YouTube channel 2019 that just outside the mall, they just put like some cones and people just skate around. Kids have lessons right there. And that, that makes skating really appealing for kids because it's very common that people go to shopping malls, Yeah, probably more than we do in Europe or mm. more in people in the US. Uh, US people go to shoppings a lot, shopping malls a lot. But in Europe, you have a lot of street shops and all that. In Asia, you have a lot of the shopping mall mm. culture. Um, hey, can you just uh, kind of like drop your kid there for 45 minutes or like see how long it takes? Or are there like scheduled lessons that you need to like... Yeah, usually you have for, scheduled lessons. Kind of like on the usually. Go or do you, have to, are, do you have to be a member or like what's the situation? From what I know, it's it can work with scheduled lessons, mm -hmm. but they leave slots open. Ah, yeah. Okay, but... If you're a club, you have a certain cost if you just go for a sporadic thing. But they try to keep like levels, things kind of like leveled. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, like if you have like a nine-year-old kid and a two-year-old kid, it's not like you can leave them there. It's not like a kindergarten. It's still yeah. like a skate school. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a skate school inside a shopping mall. Yeah. Very so. nice. Yeah. 
the kindergarten idea is also nice. That you can just drop your kid and they can play yeah. on skates. <laughs> <laughs> There's a market for that as well. Yeah, you make like a second floor and then you put it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you want, I can go to all in now. So yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we, of course, have a skate school in Amsterdam. So if you want to get a lesson while you're in Amsterdam, you can always come by and skate in the Fondel Park where we teach. And we have also their lessons. Um, For 20 years now. Wait, yeah. So because I, and we have also have teachers there available, but it's best to make an appointment. We still also don't have like the on the go where you can like drop your kids off uh, when it suits you type of situation. But it's definitely inspiring to hear <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, for 20 years, uh, indeed, we have the, the, the skate schools. I started it when I was 16. If you want to learn more about the history of this, I saw a video about that on the channel. Um, so let's move to the next era, and that's where Oli Bennett kind, uh, kind of... Yes, uh, it's kind of like an era connection. that was happening at the same time. So it's yeah. Um, how did that connection start up with Oli? Okay, so from what I know, yeah. okay, from what I know, Oli had like um, obviously he was working with a different company before that, and he had access to a lot of samples. You can say the, the name of the company. Yeah, yeah. oh, <laughs> good, would, we know it. Like he yeah. was working with Parslide. I yeah. was working with Parslide too. Cool. Or I, I don't know if we worked at the same time back then, but we did before, and then we yeah. ended up after. Yeah, but he was he was working with Parslide, and he had access to a lot of the samples. Yeah. So he. You would have a place to sell the samples. Mm -hmm. That would. That's why. Actually, the name of the shop was Outlet Store. Yeah, Rowex Outlet Store, yeah. or something like that. I think actually before that, they had the powerhouse, and they were kind of like doing the same thing out of the powerhouse already. Okay, maybe as well. So that's kind of like the first step into the roller outlets, a uh, roller outlet. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I on that I don't really know. No. To be fully honest, I don't even know how Oli met. Uh, Tracy, but I think it was online. He found the he found the skates and he ordered a sample. Oh, okay. I don't know exactly through which apps website mm. or whatever, but I know that he found a sample. He ordered a sample, and when he got the skate, he was really happy with mm. what he got. Yeah. So he got a couple more and he sold, and a couple more and he sold, and it was a product that he was giving him a good margin mm -hmm. compared to the other stuff that would be around. Yeah. And then when he started bringing more of that. Mm -hmm. He started realizing that he wanted to go full in into that, mm -hmm. and I don't know exactly why I left Power Slide. But I've read in an interview that there's also that there were a lot of struggles because he he was importing Flying Eagle actually Power Slide didn't. I think that was after. Okay. I don't know if that was. I don't know exactly at what point. I don't know exactly. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to speak for himself. Yeah. I don't know when he left, but I do know that there was a point that he was already not at Power Slide, mm -hmm. and because he was bringing a brand, he's exactly. been forbidden to sell that, and not uh, just from his company, yeah. not just from from Power Slide. He, he was like forbidden by Seba to sell their products. Yeah. He was forbidden by Power Slide. It's kind of like they felt threatened. I don't know why. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, he was. He was able to make a good margin with a product that it was very reliable for the customer mm -hmm. and it was unique. The Eagle that I told you, it was unique. You may like it, you may not, but mm. it was something very unique. And the quality of the product was there. It was a profitable product for the consumer, which was still a good price point skate. Not really like the price point skate, but a good price skate for the customer. So mm -hmm. it had all the ingredients to go well. And Oli did an amazing job because the more he sold, the more he also got the respect and people in, in China, like Tracy and John, started understanding about him. So he ended up going there. Mm -hmm. he, he started helping also with the development more and more and more. And from what I know, the F7 was already a product that he worked okay. a bit on. I don't know exactly how much, Yeah, but for anyone watching this who doesn't know Wally Bennett is, is probably one of the most important people in, in landscaping over the past 20 years. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. And Oli was probably one of the reasons why a lot of people started skating with big wheel skates. First, when he For was sure. still on power slide, there was a lot of aggressive skaters that wanted to move and he started bringing that all, um, they call it power blading, which they ended up getting into problems in, with that. <laughs> but that was basically creating big wheel UFS frames. Yeah. Is that the reason why the wizard started? I don't know. Uh, maybe, 
Yeah. yeah I, I, don't I don't know. know. I, I'm not saying that they, they were skating slalom skates. Exactly. I know that. Yeah. I know that. I know that Leon was distributing, but at the end yeah. of the day, Oli coming with a big UFS frame and like the Canadians, like Richie yeah. and Dustin skating them. Yeah. I still think that Oli was, again, as I just said, one of the most important people. And later, yeah. he was like, why don't I throw it? Yeah. And why don't I throw a spin on it? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of like uh, one of the the next steps, one of the next eras. Before we jump there, I want to see if we finished everything here. Yeah. Um, are there any like team riders um, that he like gave skates to that helped promotion in Europe? In Europe, everything was very based in Spain, from what I know. Yeah. Oli was one of them, and then there was Andy Ejidio, which is like a, a Spanish guy that used to work. He also has a YouTube channel called mm. AE Skates. Okay. AE Skates. Everything is in Spanish, and yeah. but but he's he's still a really good skater. He's still in contact with Flying Eagle. Uh, mm. He doesn't skate for Flying Eagle, but he's in contact and he's very active still. He changed a bit because obviously at the time he used to work for Oli at Roex or right. something like that. Mm -hmm. He was probably the guy that you would see in half of the videos from, yeah. from Roex. He was uh, like doing yeah. all those slides. To be yeah. fully honest, no, no. they yeah. probably were one of the main triggers for me to look into big wheel skating. Okay, for you as well. Yeah. Yes, because I, I, I remember once... Yeah. Uh, I was work I was not working with Power Slide, but I was skating for Inui, mm. and they were sending me some products, and I asked for some big wheel skates, and they told me, "Oh, why don't you check the Imperials?" Mm -hmm. And when I went to check the Imperials, like, what am I gonna do with this? Yeah, you so I started mm -hmm. looking for the Imperials. When I found the Imperials on the website, on the same website, I've seen some skates with a huge eagle, and I remember speaking with my friend Samuel that is. So I said, hey, look at these skates with the big eagle. And we even <laughs> laughed about it, to be fully honest. Yeah. And we started watching that page. That page was Roex. And uh -huh. Roex was always showing more and more people yeah. doing stuff with the skates. Mm. A couple of years later, like a couple of months later, probably I was skating them like a lot. The, the Imperials, you mean? The yeah. Imperials. Yeah, like, exactly. But the big wheel skates, that's yeah. what I mean. So that's also how you started uh, with the big wheel skating with the, the Imperial. That's kind of funny. In the I, same skate, era. I yeah. skated... Look, I'm not trying to say that I introduced anything. It's not about me, this thing at all. Yeah. But there was a skate around 2012, mm -hmm. 2013, maybe even 2010. There was a power slide UFS frame. Yeah, I know, the FSK frame. Yeah, kind yeah. of like a UFS frame. And I used yeah. to skate that a lot. Yeah. That was probably 2010, 2011. I yeah, remember like I, I opened my chin... <laughs> the, the day before the Valo team come to Portugal doing a slow I was grinding a lot with that that oh, was yeah. before the power blading thing I, I'm it not saying I started plastic spacers thing. didn't it I think Sorry? it had plastic spacers it was really weird and I, I still have it here yeah I haven't I seen it pick, in, I can uh, pick it up can I pick it up quickly? yeah sure I haven't seen this in uh, 10 years for sure this is how the whole uh, power blading thing started with this frame I'm gonna bring this to the powerhouse and uh, Richie and Dustin were living there and then they started using this frame to uh, cruise down the mountains ah it's not plastic spacers but it is like weird frame spacers that's the thing that I remember about it it's been so long uh, well I started uh, this is soul in 2006 and I opened the first shop in 2012. And then uh, we sold in the, that shop. Of course, I had a web shop before that already, but we sold quite a few of these. But I remember in 2012, this was already an old product that PowerSet kind of like It was probably 2010, I think. Yeah, it's... it was already on kind of like the, the yeah, You'll see more, as I was saying, like I used to, I, I was, look. Yeah. I, I could do a lot of stuff. I did fast life with these things Sick. on a rail, like yeah. a couple years prior. But whatever, it's not, it's not, that's not what this is about. Yeah. just wanted to... No, it's a part of the, the Oli Bennett history as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, all that is happening in Barcelona. Yes. Um, anything else we can say about that kind of like era where Oli Bennett was pushing Flying Eagle? 
also maybe like yes, the distribution of course so all of that uh, 20 started like i don't know to say look i don't want to say that it's wrong and if there's any date here that it's wrong yeah. i don't want to speak for anyone but I, what i want people to understand is how important how an important piece of the puzzle it was and yeah. it is for skating in general period yeah. mm -hmm. but i do know that in 2016 that's when flying eagle released their first carbon skate okay and that was also because of Ollie Bennett. Ah, okay. Because Sick. Ollie Bennett was working at the company mm -hmm. already, and he starts feeling the needs, seeing the needs. Yeah. I don't want to say that he was going to do this or do that, yeah. but like with him working prior, working for a company that also made like a carbon skate, yeah. that would probably be an evolution. I don't know exactly if this is just Ollie, but yeah. I do know that in Europe, a lot more people started getting like a, mm -hmm. that skate. And at the same time, Oli also started working on a different project, mm -hmm. which was kind of like reversing the coin of what he did with the power blade yeah, thing, which is like aggressive skaters yeah. wanted to have big wheels. Yeah. But I'm sure that most of the people watching this also had like a big wheel setup. It's like, oh, but I would like to try to go to the skate park or something. Yeah. And that's what Oli wanted to do yeah. with the product that ended up being released as the Enkidu, which is yeah. what Ollie used to say, it was reverse power blading. Basically, yeah. you have a big wheel skate, and by putting a sole plate, you turn that yeah. that skate into an aggressive skate. Yeah, it's kind of funny that uh, it's exactly what the FRA actually was, but and now the next step, like the UFR, uh, they made, is in a way. Yes and no. Yeah. I, had, I had a FRA. Yeah. And... Um, that was 2014 I went to Angola and yeah. I, I did like this documentary whatever and Seba supported this thing that we did at the time Bruno was already working with them and mm -hmm. they sent me a pair of skates to to do something but the skates came out after the trip so we, uh, I ended up having a pair of FRAs mm -hmm. and it was different because the FRA was made for big wheels yeah, you kept the same frame. You had yeah. a side sole plate, a little bit like the the rollerblade solo sole plate that you put from the side or the yeah. Solomon wide bodies. Yeah. While the way that Ollie did this is more mm -hmm. of what they did later yeah. with the with the UFR for sure. Yeah. With a different approach because the UFR they had to change the whole boot, making the making it UFS. While Ollie completely yeah. kept the boot one sixty five. Yeah. There's things that could have been different, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you wanted to keep the boot as close as it was. So that made the yeah. skate to be a bit different. Some a frame that is not 100% compatible with the regular UFS, but yeah. it is possible to use, and I've yeah. been using it. Yeah, um, the UFS is kind of like really centered in the in yes. the boot, and the 165 is a little bit off center. It's a little bit more to the back, I think. So how does that match? And also there's a two millimeter difference. Of yes, course. I was say more yeah. important than that, the yeah. 165 is that the UFS is 167. Mm -hmm. So you will feel the, the difference. And the frame also, other than that, when you have the Enkidu, it's not 100% centered. Yeah. Like the, the thing, the frame needs to be a little bit, the holes on the frame yeah. are not centered. But if you use a regular frame, you'll feel the frame being like, about like one centimeter yeah. pushed back, obviously depending on the size. Oh. There are ways yeah. and there are ways to to obviously make this completely different without doing different, like big, big changes to the sole plate or to any of that. But is that what the company wants? I'll just yeah. leave it blank. So the Enkiru UFS frame is actually off-center to counter the off-centeredness of the 165 yes. millimeter mount. So if you put that frame on a normal... No, no, it's not a frame to put on the other one. Okay, you cannot put that frame on a... Well, on, unless on you like wanted to have out-of-centered. Yeah, so, yes. but yeah, I mean, maybe some people for want... Sole for toe rolls and heel rolls, yeah. Yeah, or like if you flip it and you have the length more in the back so that you don't fall back. You know what's really special about the frame? It's a flat 66 millimeters frame and it comes with 66 millimeter wheels. Uh, yeah, does... Well... There's no 66 millimeter wheels on the market, really. Those are. Those are. Okay. But you know, yeah. it's, you can put like you can put 65s, you can put 64, 63s, or whatever. Yeah, but the, the, I think I would say the the most important thing here is like that's not a skate that was 
thought for the core aggressive skater that wants mm-hmm. to 450 yeah, backslide exactly. to true spin fish. But that's yeah. not the thing. That is the skate. Yeah. Just like the power blading. The power blading skate was not made for a professional slalom skater. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So why do we need to look at that as like, oh, but it needs to be. No, it's not. Yeah. It's a skater for people to dip their feet into something for those that want to do a little something at the park. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a really high quality skate. And obviously yeah. I'm biased. I work for the company and I'm obviously biased about that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, well, ask around what people think about the support of the, the skate and the quality of the product. I see there's a, a big gap in this way of thinking. And I, I love that, uh, that this sole blade was developed for this like le- reverse power blading thing. Because also in our skate school, actually, that's the whole idea that we're trying to do. We're trying to, with this is sole skate shop, we're trying to introduce as many people to our sport as possible. That most likely they are going to go recreational skate. And then if they do a good job and get motivated, mm-hmm. they will do like, uh, like uh, some advanced braking techniques. Maybe they'll do some slides. And maybe they'll learn to like drop into a bank or maybe uh, jump over like a stick or something like a small, small little tricks. And then the next step is kind of like that you go into maybe like more specific things. Then you can dive into slalom, of course, but me being an aggressive skater, I would love them to dive into aggressive skating more. So we have a lot of students actually who are trying to like drop into quarter pipes on their big wheels. And then the step for them to buy in a completely new like extra setup that like sometimes they don't even going to use completely yeah if they if they would be able to just like mount a ufs frame on their freestyle skates that would be great so you have these new like blocks like a little block that yes. you can put on their new heel but uh it's not really widely available at this point at least so maybe like in the future we'll we'll be able to accommodate uh people wanting to change to aggressive from their freestyle skates with that but just having having a soul plate, it's just it's it's so in line of the way that that uh, we should think as a sport, and it's also in line of as how our sport evolved. Because back in the day, we kind of like had one boot that could do it all. You had like a Roaches FCO, which was actually a recreational skate, but we used it for grinding. And that's one of the things that we're missing right now in the in the sport is is one skate to rule them all, kind of like a normal overall skate that can do some grind, do some slalom, do some speed skating, do some recreational skating. I heard someone around 2013, 2014 saying that one of the best things about the Richie Eisler USD skate was that someone that buy a skate, yeah. an aggressive skate for the first time, they would have a good feeling in rolling. Yeah. And that's exactly what you have with Inkido. And again, I'm not yeah. trying to just come here to promote Inkido or whatever. It's like I'm talking about stuff yeah. that was done. It was done by Oli and a lot of people didn't really have the right idea about this product mm-hmm. when it really came out or whenever it's still on the market or yeah. if it's going to happen something I can't really tell you <laughs> yet but at the end of the day it was something very special and the truth is you I'm not going to say at all that this is a better skate than the M12 that you buy I'm not going to say at all that this is a better or a worse skate but if you if it's your first time on a pair of aggressive skates mm-hmm. if you have two train tracks under your feet with yeah. anti-rockers and all that yeah. it's a really bad um experience that you yeah. have while if you get something like this that rolls you can carve you can turn it's completely different yeah so, and then you buy an aggressive skate that you know that you just change the frame and you have an urban skate but yeah. still it was done for the other thing yeah start with big wheels exactly uh, but how are the after are the like aftermarket parts available even of the In, plate? yeah some distributors have it okay yes well since now I believe in the future of uh, Flying Eagle a lot more since you're uh, in it involved. <laughs> and there's somebody else who, who will pop up later in this yes. story as well. Uh, the brand direction of Flying Eagle is going to go totally different, I think. And um, we as a shop, of course, will will sell Flying Eagle. So if the sole plate is available, we'll definitely have it in our store as well, This is Um And I'm very curious to see as well and what other skates it will fit? Have you tr- what skates did you try? From Flying Eagle? Yeah, the sole plate. At least in, t- in two other models. Yeah. One of them I haven't tested myself. I've been told that it, it does, I mean, which the, is the, the, the sole plate, right? Yes. Okay, sure. Yeah. So there's a, there's a skater that we haven't speak yet, which has also been really important for Flying Eagle, which is B3. Brian Freeman, I, 
I love beef as a as a human being, yeah. as a skater, and I actually feel sad that it's not related to the brand. I somehow understand. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows what's happening or what will happen? But at the end of the day, the last time that I was with Be Free, I was not working with 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 Flying Eagle, but Be Free was skating the skate that is called the F3 or the Origami, which is a different boot, like a, a little bit wider boot than the, um, the F5. See, once again, we bring yeah. different sizes, different names, and all that. Um, but on the F3, I know that it fits, and on the F7, which is the dual density, I've been told that it fits, but I have not tested it myself. Okay. I can test it tomorrow. Okay, good, good, good. And any other, like, uh, like a Nefar skate or Bauschad Imperial or Roll Bit Twister? On other skates, I would, I'm not, I haven't tested it. I know that I tested it on the Micro MT Plus, which didn't fit. Yeah. It didn't fit, and I haven't tested other skates mm -hmm. that fit that. Now, I do know there is other companies yeah. that try to do something similar. Mm -hmm. I actually made, I have a skate there. I can look at that gray one. It's a, yeah, I see it. It's a, a, a one to be the same. I see it there, yeah. <laughs> and that was made trying to make something under the same concept, mm -hmm. but not the same. Why not? You see the material. Because that's, that's the thing, because you can do something that Concept wise, maybe yeah. similar, but if you have no idea of what you're doing yeah. or if you don't really care, yeah. and this is where we're going to get after, I would say, with this conversation, which is what happened a couple of years later, but I will tell you that too. Yeah. You, if you're going to be making something for someone else, you will not care what's coming out of your thing. It's yeah, true. Because it's done, they have it, it's no yeah. problem to sell it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah that's basically true. it. Um, so, distribution. Um, is there something to say about that? Like I know there's a Euro, uh, like a Spanish distribution. How do, how's that going? Um, well, Oli mm -hmm. left. I don't know if it was 2018 or end of 2017 yeah. around those dates, and he left because he also left Rowex, yeah. and Rowex was the distributor for Flying mm -hmm. Eagle in Europe. So when he left. The owner of Rowex um, wanted to create his own brand. I don't know for how much longer he kept the distribution, mm -hmm. but he ended up passing the distribution to someone. Yeah. So the distribution for Europe stayed in Spain. Yeah. And that's where it started. There's a market that, that already knows. It does make sense. Mm -hmm. Now, does it make sense to have the skate more available all over Europe? Yes, I believe so. Especially with where we're going in the future, there's a need for it. Yeah, but we're gonna need to go see where it's where it's gonna go. Are there any shops in America? E yes, there's at least two shops in America. Okay. There's one called Turbulence Inline, and there's obviously Inline Warehouse. Okay. And we also expect that to change in the next couple of months. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, anything we missed? In the, like the, the 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 past, otherwise we were moving on to maybe more like your part. Yes, I think I, there's something that I spoke about here, uh, which was having our own factory, and yeah. there's other brands on the market that have their own factories. Uh, since 2015, Seba is owned by a factory, yeah. or other brands owned by factories. From now, I remember that. We said also about Roaches. Mm -hmm. And Flying Eagle, same. They have their own factory. Does PowerSlide have their own factories as well? They have assembling. Okay. But from what I know, they don't have, like, they don't produce yeah. themselves. Yeah. As far as I know, I may be something saying something yeah. wrong. Um, uh, but no, they have yeah. a, a main supplier. Yeah, They exactly. have a main supplier. Yeah. While we are our main supplier, we do work with... Yeah. We outsource some of the products, but it's, but anyway, so because we, Flying Eagle, had the, the easiness to create the products, mm -hmm. there was a couple of years, which I can't really time frame them. I can't really tell them, tell you when did it started, mm -hmm. but I do know that we were producing skates for other brands. Yeah. One of them is the European Tempish. Yeah. There was a, there was a couple of years that they had some models that mm -hmm. was also being sold by Flying Eagle. Yeah. similar with a different branding whatever okay 
I want to say that it was after Oli, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm. But I can also tell you that I think it was 2019 or 2020 that that stopped. And ever since, Flying Eagle only produces for themselves. So they do not produce. And the reason why I'm saying this, it's because it makes a comp- it can make a brand or a product completely different. When you produce any product, I'm not just saying about these skates, but when you produce skates or anything else, but you're producing for someone else, the name that it's on the skate is not you. So if something goes wrong, who cares? Do you know the yeah. manufacturer of this, this and that? Who manufactures the razor skates? You know, but most people don't. Who manufactures mm-hmm. the damn skates? No one knows. Yeah. yeah. You know? While if the name that it's there, it's your brand, mm-hmm. you really care about all that. Mm-hmm. So everything that comes out of the company needs to be over super <laughs> tight quality control, which John, which is the owner, is like is really a freak in that sense, but for yeah. good. All right, how did you get into picture? Okay, so I, I know Tracy and I know the brand, as I told you. Yeah. I first was introduced by just looking online. I think I found it on Instagram. I just mm-hmm. saw Oli posting something with Rowex. I saw that frame thing. Yeah. And then Oli kept on talking about it a lot. And before I even worked back at PowerSlide, because I worked with PowerSlide in the early 2000s, but around mid-2016, 17. Maybe 2015, yeah, 2015, maybe, early 2015. When I moved to South Africa, I was like starting a shop. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that I was starting a shop. At first, I didn't really know what was going to happen. <laughs> it's the truth. I didn't really know what I was going to do. So uh, I remember at the time, I was in contact with Tracy a little bit mm-hmm. to maybe bring some products, give them some feedback about certain things that never really happened. But yeah, we, that's when we first knew about each other, me yeah. and Tracy. And then 2019, I went for the first time in, no, in 2019, I was already working with Micro. And when I went to China to, to do some work, that's when the Inkidu was already available, at least in Asia. Yeah. And she sent me a skate, like a, the Inkidu, to make a review on my YouTube channel. Mm. And we kept that, like, every now and then it would be some contact. That was basically yeah. it, but nothing like, I don't work for you, like. Yeah. There was there were some places in the world that the distribution was actually the same. Like in Malaysia, yeah. there's a there's Chang, which is the the Malaysian distributor for Flying Eagle and okay. Micro. So. Ah, okay, interesting. So, but there's more places in the world, ah. like futurely in Brazil and mm. m- more places. Mm. Because if you're bringing some product from Asia, yeah. if you're filling a container, yeah. it's like it, yeah, it's if you think about it with your shop, you don't have that that problem or that. That thing, because in Europe you have basically all the brands available, but yeah. that that is the thing sometimes. Yeah. So I was working with other brand, and at the end I wasn't. I, I don't want to really get in depth into that, but at the end I wasn't really happy with some things. I don't have anything against anyone at the the prior brand that I worked with, but I ended up getting a better opportunity. And when I look into my future as someone who wants to do this for a living, yeah, I want to look, and I'm like, look. I'm related to a company that yeah. owns their own manufacturer. Yeah. So to the future, I have way more possibilities of growing and I can do much more for this brand. Mm-hmm. And I was already extremely excited that something was going to happen or not. I didn't know mm-hmm. until I find out there was something else, someone else that was also probably jumping yeah. on the same train as me. And when I realized who was the person, because the two of us were already speaking yeah. with Tracy mm-hmm. without knowing about each other. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. But when I find out about the person, yeah. the other person, which is a good friend, yeah. someone that worked with me at um, Power Slide before, but from the early 2000s, yeah. from the early days when I used yeah. to be a brand manager for Undercover, mm-hmm. It's 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 funny how the whole thing got yeah. got like because I remember I was I somehow had some influence on Oli getting into some st- a role at, at undercover and then Oli had an influence on bringing Kenneth into the picture mm-hmm. so yeah a couple of years later here we are again and someone that I really love his work he, he designed over three hundred pairs of three hundred different skates for, yeah. for Power Slide and yeah. to know that now I have someone that really trust the work working with me and yeah. together trying to build something like there's yeah I'm very, very excited for the future yeah I can imagine it's funny to, to hear that 
that uh, Kenneth the Third, so yeah. that's his name, was also uh, already in contact with Tracy, and you didn't even know about. It. But you heard about that before you signed the contract. So yeah, ah, right so before. So there was like a really yeah, happy I, surprise. I, yeah, it's like oh no. So basically. Um, I cannot speak for Kenneth, mm -hmm. but I, I do know that he quit Parslide and yeah. he was a freelancer. Yeah. And he looked into ways yeah. to work as a freelancer, as a skate designer, as yeah. someone who has 20, close to tw or 20 years of experience in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. He looked into different ways and he looked into his future. Mm -hmm. And we both ended up thinking alike. Yeah. And... When I've been told by Tracy, I've been work, I've been talking with this designer. Yeah. He's from Spain, and she started, and I start connecting the dots. Like, is that Kenneth? Oh yeah, it's Kenneth. Oh no, wait, wait, Tracy, I'll call you in a second. I, <laughs> I had to call Kenneth. Just, <laughs> it's yeah, really how it went. Very excited. Yeah. And then we all met in China, mm -hmm. and uh, this is also very important because in China there's also someone that it's extremely important for this company. Mm. A lot of people may have heard about Yo-Yo, which mm. is a, people know about the, the Yo frames or whatever, but Yo-Yo, it's a, an Asian woman um, who has been, she's a skater. She's the soul of skating for, uh, mm. for, for Flying Eagle. And she has a company, she has a skate shop and a whole like, school and she mm. moves a lot of people in China Yeah, since like I don't want to say anything wrong in dates but I would say like since 2010 or mid 2010 something yeah. like that she sold several brands she's um, a local distributor for Rollerblade in China but mm -hmm. she's a national distributor for Flying Eagle in yeah. China and because of that she also needs to do a lot of the marketing to promote the brand locally mm -hmm. and that started like I would say maybe 2016, 27, 2018 around this okay. this time and nowadays she is like one of the most important pieces because she's been the bridge especially since Holly left yeah. she's been the bridge to westernization of the, to the, the bridge to the west for this brand and nowadays to work for a brand that it's Uh, still very Asian based because yeah. the factory is there and all that but if this bridge makes the whole difference so Yo-Yo she's now the Asian the Asian brand manager and and what makes her so good at the bridge well she she has like basically she has the shop that I told you but she has like an agency yeah. where she produces old I'll get there in a second too the, the bridge but she has like these agency that she has a lot of people working under her that produces a lot of videos a lot of photos a lot of the content that oh. is really important and we do not this is extremely important yeah we are proud it's a chinese company we, we do not want to hide that identity okay flying eagle will not hide the yeah. chinese identity because mm. chinese is not what everyone thinks and again i'm not chinese yeah and i'm proud of who i am of what i am but i'm also proud of who i work for Yeah. I'm not okay. trying to sell anything. It's yeah. really what I think. It's, I have my family living. I, I, my family depends on me. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine myself doing something that I don't feel proud of because it would not be for the long run. So whenever I do a choice, it includes my family. And this was one of the most important ones for me. But either way. So Yo-Yo, she's yeah. an, a very important piece of this puzzle she has the, that whole agency that I told you that there's a lot of that and the reason why she's such a good bridge is she's married with a German uh -huh. she's, a, she's a skater she's married with a German she lived in Europe for periods long periods of time yeah. so she knows exactly how we live here what we do in the West and all yeah. that stuff so having someone that has been on the other side on this side and knows 100% on the other side, she can do that whole translation that sometimes yeah. is needed, you know? Yeah. That's great. So it's been, she's, again, very important piece of the puzzle. So I'm very, very excited to where things are right now, but even more to where things are going. There's a lot of things that are changing already mm -hmm. and a lot more will change. Uh, Yo-Yo also has the, the Yo-Yo frames. Um, are, are they called Yo-Yo frames? Or so basically, the the, yo the company is called Yo-Yo. Yeah. The, the frame the, she has a, a line of frames called the Sago frames okay. from Yo-Yo. Yeah, there may be different products coming out soon. Okay, <laughs> exciting. Um, let's talk about a little bit more about those products because there's also I think should be like an F1, F2, F. You talked about F3 
Yeah. Didn't talk about F4. There's more. Do you want all of them? There's the F0. Uh, oh, F0. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. There's the F0, the F1, Minus the F2. Zero. Okay. There's the F0. Okay. There's the F1. I'll tell you that. So basically, I'll go through the line. The F0. Do I have F0? I do have F0. F0 is not sell, sold in the West. It was a skate that was, let's open about things, right? Yeah. So a couple of years ago, Impala released the skate. Yeah. It had the riveted plastic frame. Yeah. It sold really great. Mm -hmm. Now, you are in China. You have access to produce a lot of the things on the market. You look at the plastic frame. You have access or you have the possibility of producing like a, a mold for a plastic frame. Mm -hmm. So for a minor investment for a bigger company, right? For a minor investment, you can actually produce a skate that can be really low cost. Mm -hmm. So we have the F0, which is like a, a riveted plastic frame, something like the, the Roaches 19... 92 right. or something like that. It's a 80 bucks skate. Some places sell it for 100. It's okay. Like, Curious to see what shell that is then. It's the F. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the F3. Sound looks it's the F2 and F3 is a similar boot and the F0 okay. is the same boot. I think F0, F1, F2 and F3 is the same boot. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. So then those are all the same but they have different specs. So instead of going like with the F Pro and the F uh, yeah. these and after they change different names they use different yeah. names that's what happened there with the nomenclature somehow yeah then there's a skate called the raven or the f4 and okay. that's a different mold mm -hmm. for the f4 only yeah okay and then you have the f5 and f6 which is the same mold yeah and then you have the f7 which is a, another different mold. and that's the newest one no and then you have two more molds you okay. have the X5 and the X7 and we're going away now here's the thing I know that you're breathing like that <laughs> I explained you the name for it it's all yeah. changing yeah. all the skates are having wars and Oli already made a big piece of it so the reason why some people call the F5 Eclipse or the F6 Falcon I think yeah. that was all Oli bringing that in like yeah. that was the F4 Raven and a lot of the names are staying the same but we're trying we still don't know I cannot really Tell you 100% sure, oh, we get rid of this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. Cannot just say, oh, it's going to... We're doing everything that we can to simplify things, to make things more uh, Western-friendly while still being East-friendly. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's it's it's, yeah. it's complicated. As yeah. it, I know that I, I may be just going all over the place, but this is hard to explain, mm -hmm. even for myself. <laughs> so it's hard to put it out there, too, without telling too much of what I can say. Uh, where do, do these uh, different molds differentiate uh, each other from? Well, for different things, from the, the mounting blocks, from the different last that they're made around, mm -hmm. from the vents that they have, from even the different shock absorber. Mm -hmm. Some of them have built-in sliders. This is something that we've been trying to do a little bit different, but it's... This is something that most people in the West are not used to. But even like in big wheel skating, people always tend to think that the skate needs the the skate needs the, um, the slider and the skate needs a shock absorber and if it doesn't have any, it can compete with the others. Mm -hmm. But well, uh, we can say that Kenneth did an amazing job mm -hmm. by making a different looking slider okay. with the other skate. Yeah. So things can happen. Things can go differently. So we'll see where it goes with that. But at the end of the day, like boots can, boots serve, as I said, some of them are dual durometer. Mm -hmm. Some of them have a different block. Now there's different cuffs on certain skates, mm -hmm. uh, different frames. Mm -hmm. So it's it's there's quite a lot of skates, and not like even in the West, mm -hmm. uh, even like in the Spanish distribution, or if you go to like roller like inline warehouse or something, you don't see the whole line. But this is normal. Okay, so. Um you can say you can say uh, what skate can it that uh, those those uh, the slider for? It's yeah, the, 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 the part slide next. Part slide next. Yes. Okay. No yeah, you're always trying to be a little bit like um, uh, precautious with like a. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. It's not even. I don't have a problem to say part slide. I love Matthias, and I'm yeah. very open about that. I, I, yeah. uh, my old boss Pang. I yeah. have nothing against them, and I, I have no problems with the people I that I worked in the past. And yeah. if there's one thing that Matthias teach me is to never burn bridges. That's the biggest lesson I learned from him as well. Look, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. And I didn't do before him, but even like having someone yeah. uh, with such a strong positioning in the industry telling me that, yeah. it's just like yeah. stamping something. Yeah, for but sure. Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, I don't want to put I don't want to put people like always like there because some yeah. people may not want to be related to this. I know that Matthias for a yeah. long time was not very happy to see any connection between this and that. So much so that they didn't want to sell to the shops that sold the other. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. Uh, what do you mean now? Like you didn't want to sell to some some, shops or some, some people, some brands may not want to be associated with other company profile interview like we're doing here. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. Like it's like yeah. they may not be as happy to see their name being mentioned as many times, or the people that may have worked for them mentioned yeah. as many times. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, that's one funny thing that I because we do a lot of reviews on our channel, uh, but hardly ever they're shared by the brand. <laughs> this is all this I don't kind, think kind the of reviews. Like, this, think this I'm being is too a, honest. Yeah, we were talking about, you know. We were talking about that yesterday, yeah. before this, we were talking about ethics. Yeah. And this, there's one thing that shouldn't happen, and I've done it in the past, and this is something that I'm, I'm learning and getting better at it all the time, I would say. Better, or at least evolving with something. It may not be better for some people. But, like, a review means something. Mm -hmm. Review means a certain opinion, and that when it's done by a brand, it's obviously biased. The mm, company will exactly. not. The company wants to sell. Will not tell you about the wrong things about it. So it's, exactly. if, if something, it's a product spec. So for a company to share a review, it's weird. Yeah, they could share, if, yeah. but then they would share if it's good. But if it's not good, they won't share. So there's yeah. then there's no stability on yeah. the type of content that you're putting out there. So yeah, I understand. That's okay. No problem there. So people <laughs> know where to go for good. I reviews. can tell you where the future of the content with Flying Eagle goes. I can Please. tell you that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where's so, the, what does the future of Flying Eagle hold? <laughs> okay, no, I can tell you like a lot about the products yet, but I can tell you like where where our image is, mm -hmm. our idea of the future is. So this is where we see, I told you already, this is the way it's going. It's 100% pl proudly Chinese company. It's, mm -hmm. There's nothing to hide here. It is what it is. If you like it, we're here. If you don't, we're here to win you. So, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, so... You speak a lot about like having team skaters and pro skaters and this and that. Yeah. But with urban skating, yeah. things are a lot different. Mm. And something, I'm not going to say brands are doing wrong, but brands are doing different from what we're trying to do mm. is the product is the hero. Okay. We keep on trying to create heroes and heroes and heroes and heroes, which are the skaters. They're needed. They are the ones that skate the thing, right? But the company produces skates. Yeah. So I'm not against having supporting skaters and doing projects together and all that. But at the end, they do a project, but it should be to promote the product. Okay. And a lot of times things are done the other way around. And yeah. what th that has been doing over the past couple of years, yeah. it's growing egos to the point that every a lot of people gets really unhappy with certain things. Oh, well, we talked about this yesterday as well. Like it's about, sometimes it's about inspiring people. 100%. Yeah. You can inspire people and you can still support people. You can still do collaborations and you can still mm -hmm. do all that. Okay. But don't focus 100% of what you do on it. You need to get the people that are on you with working with you. They need to be motivated. Mm -hmm. But if you are 100% depending on them, you can get big knocks. And at the end of the day, your product stops being the, the, the hero. If you go on most Brand accounts right now, mm -hmm. it's collaboration, 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 collaboration. Yeah. And when they do something with, which is not a collaboration, mm -hmm. it does nothing marketing wise. There's like no, like the, the accounts, like, why am I going to show this? Uh, the yeah. people that come to your account comes from this, 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 and that. Yeah, uh, okay. Hmm. So see, stuff like that. Or you, you go and you make like, you have a whole new product out and you make the whole thing about the, the John John, which is not someone, I'm just a name that I'm creating. Okay. So, yeah. The surfing world champion you yeah. make the whole thing about the John John instead of being of the Raven or the X7 or the yeah so yeah also, yeah so that's it is normal within aggressive skating to have like a, just like an inspiring a long video where people just use the product and the happen. guys are really cool and you think like oh I want to be like that I'm so gonna buy it the product it will happen it will happen even in the big wheel thing there's yeah. projects there's trips that we'll do with skaters okay. there's going to places it yeah. will happen it's okay. happening because how normal is that in uh, urban or freestyle skating how do you, how do you call this segment us whatever urban skating big wheel skating yeah. yes. sure, we're, sure. we're doing it like behind but it's urban skating yeah, in general sure. but probably did it really well mm. with the 80 millimeters project 
What was that? Can you tell me about this? Rollerblade 80 millimeters. Yeah. They went around the world. They had a team of urban skaters and they did some of the most viewed videos on YouTube right now. And what year was that? 2015 to 2017, I would say. Okay. Yeah. So around those dates, they did some of the best content still out there. Yeah. They did it with Craig Mizurian. They created exactly. a whole, they created yeah. a hero. It's one of the best big skaters of all time. Yeah. But still with Craig, yeah. Craig was like, Greg is an amazing individual. Yeah. But he always, the skate was the hero, you know? Greg okay. is here to promote the skate. The right. skate is the hero. But Greg was uh, really personified as well in those videos. Yeah. 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 So then you need the personas. So then it goes, uh, it's about... Uh, well, you, both, you have both some. Both well. you, I can tell you of two skaters right now that yeah. we have that are extremely powerful. One of them being Luis de Paulo and the other one being Awe, the, the, the Chinese skater, which is like... A, crazy talented like kind of like parkour like very athletic yeah. if i'm sure you've seen stuff of him like he was in la a couple of years ago there was a video of him like kind of like parkouring mm. on skates and That's he great. still skates and he, he never stopped the evolution it's insane so are you gonna do like a like an aggressive skating style promo video like a long form video uh, with the tour no, like a team thing like a team or a tour thing, like thing? no that's not at least it's not planned yet i'm not yeah. gonna say it's impossible yeah but for now we have certain projects where there's where certain trips and we shoot something together to promote the product and mm -hmm. that's what i mean by having like a look in other industries like like the aggressive skating industry you need to talk about it like mesmer did it yeah they travel somewhere to promote a certain product yeah. i think that's important see yeah the product is zero yeah. you have some of the best skaters in the world promoting one product yeah yeah, yeah, Mesmer does a great Valo job. did it in the past when they yeah. had the AB release or the yeah. Eric Bailey. Mm -hmm. They all go somewhere, they skate that product. The product yeah. is the hero. Yeah. This is important. And we're losing yeah. that a lot to feeding everyone's egos. Mm -hmm. And then we lose the sense of what we're here to all, as a company. And I'm talking as we as a company. Yeah. We need to sell product in order to be able to support these projects. And if we just feed egos and pay yeah. higher seller because I deserve these and that I generate these views... Yes, but if the company doesn't make money, mm -hmm. it cannot pay and cannot support anything. So it's all these things are extremely important for people to understand. It's um, yeah. Flying Eagle has a lot of different molds. There was like four, but then there was two more. So it's like six. There's more. There's even more. Yeah, there's more. And then we didn't even talk about kids' skates. We, we, we need to touch on as well. But uh, and then each of those molds have like different additions, like it's different changing. That's frames where it's coming in, and then also like different colorways within that. So that's like okay. So I can explain you about the Chinese market if you want how that works and why that happens. Okay. So I was first introduced to this with the prior company that I work for mm -hmm. with Micro, and I've been told like the reason why we need all these is because the way that you create a splash in the industry and the, the way that people even look at you, you need to have a lot of products. Yeah. It's the truth. It's like they wouldn't even, it's different from us. And okay. I will explain you that in a second. Yeah. A lot of the Asian sales that happen, they don't yeah. happen the way that you used to see, especially you as a skate shop owner. Mm. You have very few skate shops in China. Most of the things happen online. A brand could have five, six mm. what, of what they call an online shop. And what mm. they call an online shop is like being in different platforms. They call that online shop. Yeah. So example, you could have like a TikTok shop as an example, and yeah. you really invest on it. You, if you need, you have a team that works on that, producing content for that and introducing mm. like the product on the platform and all that. We don't have, but yeah. companies can do something like that. They yeah. have different platforms for that. Okay. Mm. So in order for you to be seen, if you just have one product, when people go to your account, there's nothing. Yeah. So this is just an, an mm. example. On the other end, for you as a shop owner, I, I don't run a shop. We still own a shop in South Africa. I, but I, I, I see the other side of the thing, which is like, if you're going to have all these models, all these sizes, all these colors, yeah. how many do I need to even say that I sell the brand? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. really hard. So yeah. what are we doing? We are trying, obviously, but at the end of the day, also, these are investments that a brand did over the couple of the, the past I would say almost two decades, like yeah. a decade and a half. Yeah. So what needs to happen for us, it's like it needs to adapt to certain markets, but it needs to go within the branding, you know? There are cert certain things that are, will not be sold in certain places. So what you didn't know is like there's another company, another brand, sorry, not another company, another brand within Flying Eagle Sports called BKB. 
Just like at, at Power Slide, you have Play Life. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. like at Rollerblade, you have run, uh, what is Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. Yeah. Just like I think somehow Universe Skate tried to do with uh, with uh, the Will Skate. Luminous. The Luminous. Yeah. Kind of like an entry level product. Micro yeah. started Cosmo ID. BKB has been a product since early, since 20, 2012, 2013, and that's the entry level product. Yeah. yeah. And there's like, do you have skates for less than 100 bucks? Yeah. They are same quality, come from the exact same factory, go through the same quality check, yeah. but with lower specs. Mm. The wheels are not as good. Um, some of the thing is riveted instead of having the screw. Mm-hmm. And it's little things yeah. that at the end will give you a product at a lower cost. Yeah. And all these things are happening. So so you're going to move some of the products, some of the shells to the BKB? Um, no, not branding? really. But what's going to happen is not every skate will come in every single configuration. If yeah. that's, and <laughs> some things need to be adjusted. And yeah. the, that's already happening and it will happen more. But what you also need to understand is like when you produce your own products, you don't produce 500 of the skate that comes all together. You mm-hmm. probably produce a couple thousand. So then you have a couple thousand shells. Yeah. And how am I going to sell this shell? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm yeah. going to do that. Now, it yeah. doesn't need to be, it doesn't necessarily need to be like this because when you're doing this, mm-hmm. yes, you can get to different markets, but you cannot get a strong message across yeah, the board. Exactly. So there's pros and cons, and we're working on it. That's That's been mine and yeah. Kenneth's and Yo-Yo and Tracy's job. It reminds me of the Steve Jobs story when he got back to Apple in like 95 or something. I forgot my polar name. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Steve Jobs? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I only have Are one you, job, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to um, like cut half of the like product line of uh, Flying Eagle? I wouldn't say cut, but it's adjusted. Yeah. Okay. So some things will make sense to call three different names for something that's the same. Yeah. Okay. So something can be called the same name, but then it has like the pro version or the whatever yeah. version, the amateur version. It doesn't have amateur version. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but something like that. Um, like I know that you're a huge advocate of dual size liners. 100%. Things like the product needs to be very shop friendly yeah. and not just shop friendly, but also internet. You also said it to, yes, to me yesterday before this conversation. It also needs to be very internet or to e-commerce friendly because the worst thing that you can have is like a skate that it's extremely tight extremely narrow Mm -hmm. one size only that probably 50% of the times people don't fit great it's an amazing skate Mm -hmm. but it would be an amazing skate if you'd come to a shop and try it and probably get one size bigger yeah yeah true well it would be good if the product line is a little bit more um, clear um so that uh, sh- shops know like what to what to get and what not to get and like what are the imp- more important models because right now it's just for me uh, we, we're just starting out with flying eagle of course so we're probably when the, by the time this comes out we already have it in our web shop you can buy it from us um, but but right now it still looks like a little bit of a of yes, a blur it's it's and, a uh, it's a puzzle with a lot of pieces that are that, not together yet. I think we need to do one more video about like reviewing all the differences. Want yeah. to do that? Is it so that it's like that we can compare we can it, do it a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably next on the channel then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. Um, and there's other things. Huh? By the way, we didn't talk about one of the most important years for Flying Eagle. Yeah. Which is actually 20, 2023. Oh, really? We released two, par- we released two new molds. <laughs> Okay, the X7. The X7 and yeah. the X5. Okay. And again, yeah. the names are prior to us, mm-hmm. but yeah, those skates are something that have been doing really good in terms of uh, people's interest. Yeah. And in terms of the way they feel, they're like completely different. And even like mountings and everything, they're different. And in my opinion, they're unique. And this is something that I like a lot. Because the way that I see the market going, oh wow, I have a cat knocking on the door. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way that I see the market going, yeah. it's been more and more and more minimalistic, and every yeah. single brand trying to get more minimalistic. Yeah. We're losing identity. In a sense, 
some of the brands that were something look i can tell I, i know that you are a certain type of person that likes something very minimalistic yeah but sometimes some styles don't they just don't uh, the word that chinese would say resonate. all the time yeah they don't gel they don't resonate with a certain brand yeah that's why sometimes some brands are needed like the mesmer brand mm-hmm. would not make sense in in usd the same way you couldn't create like the whole team and all that just to sell a certain product you know yeah. so they i know that some people do not agree because there's extra cost needed to create a second brand and all that stuff mm-hmm. but at the end of the day there's also another thing other than just that which is like the minimalistic going minimalistic it's never been flying away it's yeah. been it's getting more and more in a way that it's more like i would say perfect especially with the last couple of models that came out yeah. and with what's coming next it's going to be more like western friendly let's put it that way yeah but if you go outside of high school mm-hmm. you go outside of high school and look at a, a kid dressing and tell me how many kids will dress minimalistic uh, um well uh Definitely, they don't have like uh, same stuff. Graffiti, yeah, well, they don't. No, no, no. I mean, but we don't have graffiti stuff. One hundred percent. But what I'm trying to say is like, look at the shoes, look at their stuff. It's we need also some irreverence, if that makes sense. It doesn't need to be always the same stuff. That's not what I'm trying to say. But having something that it's unique, like a good example of that. Let's go to another brand. Let's speak about, like I said, Power Slide next. Yeah, the whole thing around. Yeah. The little slider. Yeah. It makes such a different look to the skate. Yeah. Things like this, they're not necessarily minimalistic, but they are yeah. little touches yeah. that make something completely different. Yeah. Yeah, true. So yeah. these things in my opinion are needed and a lot of times mm-hmm. things are changing to we need to adapt to what everyone else is going. Mm-hmm. How many more damn 909s we need? <laughs> Do you need what I'm saying? Yeah, it's lots. like the same uh, style, yeah. everything is like yeah. cannot go in the same way. We need to Um yeah there's a lot there. I I think it's good if if uh, skates have like a if brands have a a, a solid like black model that's consistent. 100%. I I compare it to like uh, Converse. You can always get like Converse All-Star uh basic and then Converse kind of like does their funny stuff on the side. But you have to have like your your minimalistic skate as the as the base. And then if if you're a small shop you can just get that one and we of course are a big shop and then we we get, can get the funny stuff as well but then um yeah that, i think that that does best for your brand because then like for us as well we can invest in the min- minimalistic skates a lot easier okay. it's easier but to get big orders i think well. we're um mixing the concept of minimalism i think that's because okay. you're talking about like a simple basic color a safe yeah, color which are yeah. safe yeah safe it's needed and safe needs to be on stock and that has been something yeah, that we exactly. spoke about it yeah. and as a shop owner or as someone who was working with me as a director of the brand can it yeah. it's been something that we said right away we need certain things because this is what keeps the stability of the brand price yeah. wise and all that stuff yeah. there's always stuff that needs to be on stock yeah. 100% what yeah. i mean by uh, minimalism is more like about skates with uh, holes or skates with pointy things yeah. some of them are needed okay you look at shoes if you if you start changing the whole line of nike to look just like the what was the name of that uh, skate shoe that everyone uses used uh, i don't remember there was a skate shoe that everyone used on the nike line and the dunk no the oh. dunk is like it was in the beginning now it's more modern again okay. whatever but there was a time that everyone skated the same style of shoe from Nike it has like three laces on the side and every brand tried to make the exact same okay. if Nike would have changed their whole line all their molds and everything yeah. just to make that what would have happened now they wouldn't yeah. have the dunk yeah. they wouldn't have these they wouldn't have that so sometimes there are changes that are made to the molds mm-hmm. that may not be future proof okay so you're not Steve Jobs No, no, not at all. No, okay. <laughs> They're going to throw away half of the product line. Okay. No, no, no the, I'm not saying that we're like the, look, the molds are owned by the brand and they don't need to be used all at the same time. If that's yeah. what you're asking, yeah. they don't need to be used all at the same time. Yeah. And some of the molds will not be used at least under the same brand. Mm. All right. Uh thanks for the explanation. Um so you already said like 2023 some stuff changed and is that mainly because of Yoyo? Is he the not one just, steering that? Like, who, 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 no, okay. Yo-Yo has been working for way longer. And okay. with Yo-Yo, you will see the change if you go... You don't usually use 
most people that watching this don't know about any Chinese platforms or anything like that, but the social media platforms or the market, the platforms where marketeers work in Asia, mm -hmm. they're extremely important. As I said, most of the sales are done via... Um, Where's the brand direction coming from then? Like, because also I see they're having like a five wheel frame. No, and that's that's like, yo-yo. That's yo-yo. Exactly. But it's been for a past. What I'm trying to say is that not just 2023. It's been a couple of years that she's yeah. been working on something. Obviously, it takes time because if you're not producing 500 skates, yeah. if you're producing a couple thousand, yeah. for a line to change, it's not from one moment to the other. So yeah. that's why I said like whatever it was released, even if some of the stuff that was released was already uh, under like we created a campaign Kenneth and I had this whole campaign that we had organized mm -hmm. marketing wise right but the skate was not designed by us mm -hmm. okay so it's the things that we are working on yeah are happening yeah forward yeah exactly so Makes right sense. now we're like making a lot of the things that probably People wouldn't look at it with the same attention. We're trying to bring attention to the details that have always been there and people just didn't look. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. I, I'm not sure if, uh, if we said that about Yo-Yo that C is the one who has the Yo-Yo frames as well. Yes. And they are basically like a, so like a wizard style frame or like a NN, Endless, Rocking. All those brands, they have like a long wheelbase with a, a rocker. With it, they all kind of like look the same because uh, it's a, um, it's mm -hmm. a f there's no holes in it on the yes. side, so it's like a like plain. a modern yeah. industrial design style. And she has a, a brand doing that, and from the, from that angle, she kind of like incorporates that style as well already. So in uh, in the Flying Eagle so. uh, stock skates, and that's very interesting because it's kind of like it's a matter of time, in my opinion, for those type of style of skates to to really like hit the market, hit the bigger market as well. So it was in the beginning of this conversation, we spoke about something extremely important, which was said in Asia, yeah. most things are competition based. Yeah. But having someone doing the bridge that I told you, the, the West and East bridge like Yo-Yo, yeah. she's been able to bring something into, into Asia. Example, when I worked with Micro, Mm -hmm. It was extremely hard to explain to someone what urban skating is. Uh, okay. Because urban skating is not a, scene, a thing. Yeah. I, I remember being at the office at Micro, like, it's lunch. Okay, I'm going to go for a skate. No, 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 no. It's very dangerous. The car is like, look, I do this every day. Yeah. <laughs> do you understand? It's like, it's a different way of looking. It's, we need to respect that because it's the way that people grow up, the way that look at yeah. it. It's not the same for me or for us. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, Yo-Yo has been introducing a lot of her team to a lot of these and you will see look there's there's a lot of skaters in china right now mm -hmm. there are amazing urban skaters wizard skaters mm -hmm. and that's what she's been doing and a lot of times if you create something locally you can have a better price for your product you know mm -hmm. that yeah if you need to import there's like import taxes and all that so a lot of the products that you will find mm -hmm. from flying eagle they're sometimes cheaper in 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 Asia. It's not like you can order it online to get it cheaper, but if you are there, if you live there, if you have access to the platforms that are usually closed for China, mm -hmm. you you can get some of the products cheaper. And this happens everywhere. Mm. It's just the way it is. Yeah, just to be like that in America, that like everybody had like a friend who has a dad who worked in America and then he would get skates yes. when he w went on business yeah, without, trips. Without paying that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe last topic. I'm not sure if you have any more topics, but this the kids' kids. Oh yeah, yeah. Th this is like this is funny because we've been speaking adults, and adults is like yeah. half of the sales. Okay, <laughs> I still a lot. Yes. Oh well, wait. But like but until now, we only spoke half of it. <laughs> but children's skates are cheaper as well, so it's the, uh, in numbers. It's bigger than way yeah. bigger. Yeah. Numbers. Okay. So clubs. I yeah. told you, there's three. I think I don't want to say anything, anything wrong. It's around 3.2 million lessons per year. Of course, lessons mean... Um, wait, uh, wait, say that again so that people really understand that this number, which you just said. 3.2 million lessons per year. Okay. Everybody understand it? That's <laughs> <laughs> like, of course, a lot of the kids will have two lessons per day, yeah. the per, per week. Yeah. That means around 100. Yeah. But not every kid will have two lessons per 
per week for the whole year. Yeah. I'm just like, but in general, for the numbers that we have, the number of clubs that we have, the number of in yeah. average lessons that we have per day, obviously weekends are stronger or end of the day stronger when they came out of school and all that stuff. It's average, let's put it, three million lessons per year. Yeah, I think this is so... At, at like a high season, we have like 1,000 or 2,000 lessons a year. Yeah, but <laughs> it's completely different. You're talking about like a shop in Amsterdam, which is amazing. Yeah. If you had uh, like 200 shops, then would be yeah. a lot more. A lot more, yeah. See, but that's, that's what we're talking about. about. And how many instructors do you have at this is all? Um, uh, it fluctuates, but like five steady ones at this okay. point. Imagine yeah. nine full-time. Yeah at each time in a place that it's made just for that in a shopping world people coming in and out mm. and it's the whole structure has been there okay you can book online it's just like in a gym that you go do group lessons and all that you have for different ages and all that so it's it's made in a completely different way but what obviously these things again the product is the hero yeah and these things are done to sell product let's not hide let's not yeah sugarcoat shit it's mm. the truth like it's a company. It needs to generate revenue in order to be able to grow mm -hmm. or to keep on going. And that's what's been happening. And it's like these clubs been able to get more people on the skates and more people to know about the brand. And then sometimes the kids buy the skate and then the father buys the skate too, whatever. But at the end of the day, there's several models. There's, we don't have, we don't make uh, soft boot skates. Good. While most other brands make a soft boot skate, there's yeah. no soft boot uh, flying eagle skates but there is carbon skates there is the drift junior which is like a carbon oh. it's a it's a carbon slalom skate which is extremely important mm. for china as it can mm -hmm. then there is uh speed skates for kids too mm -hmm. like in the niche there's beginners really beginner friendly like the basic of the basics with a built-in frame like a one-piece construction mm -hmm. and then there's like most of them like all of them are size adjustable other than the drifts yeah the drifts are not size adjustable the carbon one mm -hmm. it's there, it's possible to make but a carbon skate for a size adjustable carbon skate for slalom doesn't really make sense because it's something on the inside that moves meaning that your foot is pulled back so if you want to do a toe roll instead of having the wheel here you're going to have the wheel here yeah, the whole piece, sure. so it, it makes it like really you need to have the, the wheel under to be able to control it and the wheel far is hard so. but maybe you can make it so like if you look at a, a carbon shell, just a shell, right? It goes it goes up in the in the back. It has a flat bottom here, of course, and then it goes up in the back. It, and then the thing is, you would so need to, you would need to be able to change the size of the frame too. Yeah, the size can be adjusted by like a, a soft part or like or a plastic part on the top, of course. But then if you just have the the mounting part uh, move front and yes, back as well, so, then so, yeah, one hundred percent. But. Well, I understand what you mean like being able to adjust the frame where you want but at yeah. the end of the day the frame unless the frame would get shorter and longer yeah. for slalom skaters it's extremely important to have the right size uh, frame for your right size foot yeah. so for beginner skaters it's all good for you to go do your lessons it's okay but when you start playing with the front wheels and the back wheels and all that then you need to have the right size so yeah. that's why the drift juniors are like a very specific type of skate then yeah. it's like with speed skating, it's different. They don't need to go on a tow roll and a hill roll. But still, it's in speed skating, it's more about there's regulations about the maximum wheel size that you can yeah. use for a certain age. Yeah. So all these things need to be going within regulations. Yeah. And then still, the basic of the basic skates, that's what sells the most. The people, the skate that we see mm -hmm. in the Catlands and all this thing in Europe, uh, in the US, they would say, I don't know, Walmart. Walmart, yeah. Or right. they have another one. I don't know the name of it for sports. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those those types of skates, it's it's very important because that's what's going to fund yeah. some of the other projects that we have. Then that, that is mm -hmm. gonna what's being funded here, it's sometimes what allows people to do this trip. So this is all these things that people don't understand, but it's all part of it. Mm. But again, if I would make like uh the hero the kid that buys the skate at two and not the skate, yeah. things won't be different. So it's yeah. Well, um, I think I'm at the end of my line of questionings. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other like things that do you think that we missed in the whole story of the Flying Eagle? 
from start to finish, yeah, I, looking at it from marketing, product relation, and also maybe distribution or like company side? I think that's a very important thing, which is like for people to know that we're open and we're happy to get feedback. Okay. This is extremely important. It's not like whatever, it's not like you have this feedback and it's going to be happening mm. the way you want right away, but it's extremely important to get feedback and use it as data. If yeah. you say it's bad, if it says it's good, if it says it's so-so, mm. then I say, I don't, know, I don't know. But if there's 10 people saying it's bad, one saying it's good, then it's really bad. You know. Yeah. So this type of data, it's important for us. Feedback is good. It's, yeah. Look, feedback doesn't always need to be positive. Doesn't always. It's feedback. That's what it is. Yeah. So for us, it's important. We are aware of certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for people that are watching this. It's still very important for the people that watch up until now. Yeah. There's a thing happening right now. There's a website called Flying Eagle Skate without the S that is not Flying Eagle Skates, that is not run by our company. We are acting on it. Yeah. The product that they sell is real. Yeah. The product is not sold by us. Yeah. So we are acting on it. We are we are doing a lot of changes digitally too, in terms like for all of you guys to be able to get the product available where you live. So you go on the website, which needs to be changed a lot of things. We're working on it. But you get on the website, you tell, put your location, you'll have access to a, your closest dealer. All these things mm -hmm. we're working on. We yeah. are aware of it. So, But feedback is welcome. Yeah. Uh, just use either marketing at flyingeaglesport.com. Use that email and be good. Cool, man. That's great that you're asking for feedback. I think you probably have a lot of work ahead of you with uh, just starting fresh out from for this company together with uh, Kenneth. It's going to be a great adventure, probably. Yeah, it's good. Starting a fresh, kind of like starting something together with a friend. That's nice. So good luck with that, and thank you for your time uh, and all the the insights into the Flying Eagle thing. I hope people know better about what what's happening with the brand, where it came from. Yeah. And maybe also what the direction is in the future now. Uh, let's keep a close eye out on it. If you, they want to follow Flying Eagle. Yeah, it's always flyingeagleskates.com. The only one, the only platform that is not flyingeagleskates.com is FE Skates. And that's weirder because they don't allow to put everything. Everything else is oh. flyingeagleskates.com. Ah, okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, you can follow it, of course, on social media. And um, if you want to learn more, like other behind the brand stories we have it on our youtube channel of course and we do reviews and um lessons on our youtube so if you want to learn more about skating in general check out our this is soul youtube and ricardo of course has a great channel ricardo lino on youtube as well and he also does like product information also lessons yeah. so i think that's together it's a great uh uh how do you call that integration yeah, and uh, I'm happy to do this video with you. So yeah. thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you guys for watching at home. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry if I didn't know enough about the early days of the company, but I tried to get as much feedback as I could. And I tried to give you as much that I know about the brand as I could. So thank yeah. you even for this. Thank cool. you, everyone.